Welcome to the Built On Air Podcast, the variety show for all things Airtable. In each episode, we cover four different segments. It's always fresh and different and lots of fun while you get the insider info on all things Airtable. Our hosts and guests are some of the most senior experts in the Airtable community. Join us live each week on our YouTube channel every Tuesday at 11 a.m. Eastern and join our active community at BuiltOnAir.com. Before we begin, a word from our sponsor, on to air Backups. On2Air Backups provides automated Airtable backups to your cloud storage for secure and reliable data protection. Prevent data loss and set up a secure Airtable backup system with On2Air Backups at ontoair.com. As one customer, Sarah, said, having automated Airtable backups has freed up hours of my time every other week and the fear of losing anything. Longtime customer David states, On2Air Backups might be the most critical piece of the puzzle to guard against unforeseeable disaster. It's easy to set up, and it just works. Join Sarah, David, and hundreds more Airtable users like you to protect your Airtable data with On2Air Backups. Sign up today with promo code BUILTONAIR for a 10% discount. Check them out at ontoair.com. And now, let's check out today's episode and see what we built on air. Welcome back to the Built on Air podcast. We are in season 16, episode three. Good to be back with you, myself, Ali, and Camille, and our top returning guest, Scott Rose. Welcome back. Thank you so much. I'm thrilled to be here. Always good to have you back on. And uh, so we'll walk you through what we're going to be talking about today. Built on Air podcast is an hour long show where we'll talk about all things Airtable. We always start with our round the bases to see what's new in Airtable and all the different communities, keep you up to date. Then a quick um, spotlight on OntoAir, our primary sponsor. And then Scott's gonna walk us through a third party app called Fillout, Fillout Forms and how that works with Airtable. Then uh, Ali is gonna show us some scripts that are able to search throughout all the fields and then how to join our community. And then finally, I'm going to walk us through the array slice new function that was added, new formula function that was added. So exciting show for you today with our round the bases. Um, I'll start with, we talked about uh, there was a big conference in France, the No Code Summit. So um, I looked through Twitter, saw a couple of cool things. A lot of people that we know in in the built-on air community and just the Airtable community were there, um, saw lots of pictures. I don't think any of us went, but saw some cool things. So definitely, um, and I did see they're doing it again. So I'm like, maybe next year it's gonna be in Paris. And so maybe next year, I think it's in October again. That'd be great. Oh, I saw there was a Smart Suite banner in the background. So they were there. Yeah, yeah. Smart Suite was definitely there. Was I there? Think... Yes. I think I don't think Airtable did any, um, you know, talks. Um, Smart Suite had a talk. I think Fillout was there. Um, there were like a lot of tools that I had seen and had tried to use before. So I was a little bummed that I couldn't go, but maybe next year. Yeah. If we buy tickets now, a year in advance for airfare, I think we'll get them for like fifty bucks a ticket. Yeah, I think that was it. Uh, because the price of the conference was perfectly reasonable, in my opinion. It was just like, okay, well, now I've got to fly to France and then get, you know, lodging for the period of time. And I just didn't plan far enough ahead. Yeah, same with me. Yeah. Next. So anyways, if, if you uh, went to the show, let us know how it was, what you liked about it. Um, and so, yeah, maybe next year we'll make an appearance. <clears throat> All right, a couple um, threads on AI. So on Reddit, they were talking about AI, what people thought about it. Um, so it's starting to get out there. It's still in beta with within Airtable, um, but um, interesting to see people start to talk about it. General consensus, it's kind of mixed, I think, is at least according to this thread. Some people are fans, some people are not. Any, any thoughts on the AI uh, feature in Airtable yet for those who have played with it? 
Um, I haven't personally used it yet, but some of the sentiments I heard is that it because it's a field, it's sort of limited into filling in that one particular field with data, whereas other platforms have integrated a AI in other ways, like, you know, build my automation for me with AI or construct a table or a base for me using AI. So it's just limited in its scope. Um, but in terms of what the AI field does, I mean, they all do the same thing. To be honest, they're all effectively using the same uh, technologies. But if you're looking for something that's going to do more than just enrich your data, then um, you might be disappointed with your tables AI. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, I know Chris. Chris uses it a lot, and he shared some of his use cases, Chris Dancy, and comments on there. Um, so yeah, but keeping in the in the thread of AI, in the built on air community, this was in a lot of other places. Um, Softer announced their Softer AI, and um, so they kind of yeah, it's different. It's not just it's not just kind of a wrapper around prompts. Um, they build it into the application and allow you to, they use AI to generate apps with just a few um, inputs from you. Yeah, so. very cool stuff there. I haven't played with it yet, but they're using AI across their whole platform in so many different ways too. Like they even have, I'm not sure if it's powered by a mid journey or, or what, but they have a way you can just type in what you want for an image to be generated. And like in the same place where you can search for stock photos, you can say like, I want a truck driving down the road and it'll just generate an AI image for you, which is really mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, I have mixed thoughts on, on this approach. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's cool. I think it's, I think from a developer standpoint, like this saves them from having to create a ton of templates. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it, they'll have the same issue that all the templates have is like, they're great for proof of concept or to like, see what's possible, but what it actually builds is not exactly what you want. And it becomes sometimes more difficult to mold what was built with all the things versus like just starting from scratch. You know, like I, I imagine most of us start from scratch when we're building new new apps in Airtable instead of using something from the universe or something. Right. So I, I think we'll see similar approach where it's like, oh, the initial wow factor will be cool. But when once you're a power user, you probably will still start from scratch is my thought. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It wasn't software, but it was on no loco, which allows you to generate, um, you know, a basin uh, app design from AI and I tested it out. And because I wasn't familiar with um, how their, you know, behind the scenes, how their tables look and sort of operate, there were, the prompt got close to what I wanted for a basic schema. So that was useful, but there were like extra fields that were added and I wasn't sure how NoLoco specifically handled links. And so I like deleted what I thought I didn't need and it kind of, I just had add some of them back and it kind of gets you in a position where templates are like made and reviewed by a person as like, yeah, this is what, this is a good starting point to use for a broad number of people. Whereas AI is doing its best to, you know, match your prompt. And if it gets something wrong, it's going to be in the final product rather than a template being like designed for that purpose specifically, but more generically, of course. So pros and cons with both. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we'll see, but this is definitely the, I think going to kind of be the, the status quo, the standard for, for software, um, things like this built AI built into the application. <laughs> so will be interesting. All right, continuing on, now we're going to talk a little bit about pricing, our favorite topic. Uh, <laughs> so on Reddit, somebody lamenting that on the free tier, you no longer get your one free extension that you used to get. Oh. Yep, this is, uh, you know, 
the long arc of Airtable's pricing structure. Originally, free plans couldn't use extensions at all. Mm -hmm. um, well, originally, ex extensions didn't exist at all, and they were added for pro users when they were added. So that was like, that's how they started, and it was kind of the accepted thing. And then the scripting extension got released as a beta that was available to anyone. Then there was this long thing about whether or not it would become a paid feature like all the other extensions or free like it currently is. And they made it free. And then they changed their pricing structure so that the scripting extension was free for everybody, no matter what. And you can have one other extension for free if you were on the free plan. And then they changed it again so that the scripting extension is and all apps or extensions are at the teams formerly known as pro plan now. So, you know, it, we're back to where we started, but because there was that like two years of, you know, varying degrees of letting um, the lower tiers use it, it kind of, you know, if you were yeah. relying on whatever uh, extension you chose or the scripting extension, like, what do you do? I, I guess you upgrade, um, you know. Yeah, and what, what I thought was interesting is that they actually took it away. So this person, well, it's not quite clear if they actually took it away or they created like a new base and it wasn't available. Does, did it actually take it away if you were using it? I believe it will um, disable the extension. So, and that kind of happens if you were to like download a base off of the like universe that used a bunch of extensions and you put it into a free workspace, um, you know, before they, the most recent pricing change, it would just disable your, ex your extension. It wouldn't delete them, but you couldn't use them until you upgraded or moved it to a different workspace. Right. So I imagine it's the same experience. It's still there, but you can't use it until you pay for it. I think the big issue here with this guy's post and with many people's sentiments in general is that air, you know, people expect companies to raise their prices, you know, when inflation is going up and, you know, you, you know, prices go up. But I think what everybody was not expecting and they feel like slapped in the face is that Airtable took away features yeah. at existing price points. Yeah. Like it would be one thing to say, you know, oh, you know, I'm, we're so sorry. We now have to double the, the fee you pay for this. That, that would already be bad enough. But what they're saying is, oh, all the things that you were already used to getting at this price point, they're now gone for, mm -hmm. for the free plan, for the team's plan. The plus people are the only people that really made out like bandits on this one because yeah. plus people are still paying their old prices, but they're getting all the new features of teams, which is very interesting. Are they paying the old price? I thought they had to upgrade. It it you made them upgrade like automatically, but I believe you were able to keep the price point. I don't know for how long, if it was just like for the end of whatever that cycle was, but at least initially they were still at $10. Oh, okay, yeah, I don't know how long the old pricing got, like Camille just said, but yeah, so there's the 10, the 10 people that had plus. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Exactly. See, yeah. I feel like it would, I feel like your tip would have been better if they like grandfathered people in, in some way, or just let them keep their existing features and then do a price increase. I think that would have been more palatable to people. Yeah. Like, I think in the no code world, $20 is some magic number that everyone just decided <laughs> Some batch of features is going to be $20 a month per user, and we're just going to change what that batch is, you know, every winter solstice, it seems. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, similar on that note, uh, actually, Scott responded to this. Similar kind of on pricing, if you were on the paid tier and you move it down to the free tier, what happens to the records? What happens, Scott? Yeah, the records are not deleted, so the records are still in your base. Um, but I don't actually know what it what happens when you try to add new records above the limits. I don't know if the plus sign turns into a lock or something, but basically if you do downgrade, you will still see all of your old records there. Um, has anyone tried to add a new record to a base that's been downgraded and over the limits? 
it doesn't, it just is all grayed out. Um, mm -hmm. I can't recall if it actually is a lock, but yeah, you, you can't add new ones. And that's only, I've, I've noticed only in a free account that's over limits. If you're over limits in a pro account um, or team's account, still getting used to the new nomenclature, you, you can still add records. I don't know for how long they're going to let you to do that, but um, there's some sort of grace period um, for a paid account. But for free, they definitely lock it down. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. All right. Moving on now into the uh, Facebook community. Let's see if the post here. Okay. We got to be, we got to be fair. Scott's going to give the pro for fill out. Uh, Charlie shares a, a interesting, weird um, bug or feature. Apparently it's a feature, but basically in fill out, um, although Charlie's a fan, says it's an amazing product but their collaboration functionality behaves weird where if you get added as a collaborator, it pulls all of your forms um, into that collaborator account or something. So when you get added as a collaborator to one account, that account can now see all your other forms. So they don't like separate out all the forms across collaborators or your personal. Yikes. So be careful about that. Yeah. That's very interesting. Yeah. I noticed that before I signed up for my own fill-out account, I actually had a client invite me in as a collaborator on theirs. And when I right before I accepted like the accept button to be a collaborator, there was actually a warning about this on the fill out. And it said something like, if you accept this invitation as a collaborator, like you will not be able to create your own account. Or something like that. So that may be related to what Charlie mm -hmm. has pointed out here. So that hopefully they'll fix that at some point. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like they probably have to implement something akin to Airtable's workspace feature where, you know, it's a separate environment, but you can have access to workspaces that are shared with you. I mean, the, the issue with Airtable is that you're charged by workspace. And so if you need, you know, two or more, you're effectively doubling your price if they decide to start charging by workspace instead of whatever their current pricing structure is. But it would mm. patch a pretty serious um, like security thing for me. For me, it's not the form necessarily, but the form submissions, which I imagine you would have access to. And so like, yeah. you know, you want to share everybody's email who is <laughs> loosely associated with you. That doesn't seem reasonable. Yeah. Jen says that that uh, she pointed out and their response was that you need to create separate emails for different logins to each account. Yeah. What I've been doing with my clients is just logging in with their email address and password. You know, they just shared that with me. That that would be like a quick fix. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Next one. Also from the Facebook Airtable community. Um, Oh yeah, this is also on pricing. Uh, if you have an old Airtable legacy account from 2018 with the old free plan allowed, does anybody know if it will still keep that? And if not, what will they change with all these updates? My guess is no. There was someone on the Airtable community forums complaining about something similar to that, where they were like, we were grandfathered in for all these years and now everything's changed. That's just my guess. I don't know for sure. I don't think they're going to be grandfathering anyone in, but however, I'm not sure how they would treat accounts like that. Like how, how would they make somebody choose which five or which collaborators to keep? Or are they going to kick everybody out at the same time? I don't know. Yeah. Apparently Chuck asked support and they said there's no plans to grandfather in legacy plans. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's hard when you're like comparing a 2018 plan versus, you know, the 2021 plan versus the 2022 and 2023. Like there's so many different versions of these different plans. I mean, we, there's this whole discussion of whether Teams was an appropriate name for the formerly known as Pro Plan. But at least I now can call it something different from the previous four different pro plans. <laughs> it's hard to say what features you pull forward from some of the, you know, older versions of the product and, you know, unlimited 
editors and creators. Sounds awesome. And it's a free account. It's not like you can put a bunch of stuff in there. Uh, right. So I, I think it would be great if that was rolled forward, but I don't suspect that they will. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it'll be interesting because I have one of those and it, it says on there, you know, it says legacy free or something like there's there's a call out there. So, you know, and they try to get you to upgrade um, to the to the new free. Um, but yeah, I haven't I haven't looked at that space in a while. Right. Let's see. All right, a few more from the Built on Air community. We have to decide on the show. Is it database or database? That was the discussion. I don't even know. I think I say it both ways. I and I think that's so exactly too. what Dan wrote at the top there, too. Yeah. I think I say it both ways. Yeah, I mm -hmm. definitely do. Yeah, me too. I, I wrote there that, uh, that Hannah made me realize that I have no consistency with the yeah. pronunciation of this word. Right? I know, right? Yeah, yeah. It made so, me very aware of this issue. <laughs> and Justin got a real world uh, use case of this. Apparently, there's a movie, Spies in Disguise, where they have this similar debate. So that was ironic. <laughs> I love it. Good stuff. And Melanie Melanie says they, they've already removed the, the, the legacy free. <clears throat> Wow. So, interesting. Uh, maybe gone. Oh, you know what else is interesting? I have a bunch of clients that are on pro that still haven't been automatically transitioned to teams yet. I don't, I'm assuming it's coming. I thought it was coming in August or September mm -hmm. and now we're mid October. Have you guys seen that with any of your clients that are on pro? Um, let me check my air table and see what it says I'm on. Yeah. I, I think, I think they haven't fully rolled it out. <laughs> It's still, and I don't know what their criteria is for who gets switched over. Yeah, mine still says pro. Mine still says pro too. Interesting. Maybe they maybe they've decided not to go with the new pricing, <laughs> <laughs> or they decided to go with the new pricing but not the new names. Meaning things stay. Oh. They get more confusing. Right. <laughs> right. You started to call it the new name, and now it's the old one. Yeah. yeah. Right. Right. So and what's I, interesting is I just paid yesterday my annual, like for the next year of Airtable, but it still says pro. Uh, yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. That's, oh, but that's the same, right? Pro and teams are the same pricing, right? Right. Interesting. I wonder what it says for people that just sign up, like if, if new accounts have switched over or mm. it's still the same. Interesting. Yeah. 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 That would be interesting. Very All right, next one. Uh, this is a cool um, show and tell from Meredith and the Built On Air community and her company. Um, kind of, it's kind of cool. Let me click on their link. Um, so they take they take recycled turbine blades and they turn them into artwork, functional art. Yeah. So these come from jet engines or you know jets, and then they turn them in. And it, and the back end is all built in Airtable, so that is pretty cool. We'll need to get her on the show to to share what what they did. So there you can see something that is built out of a jet turbine. That's wow. very cool. Yeah, yeah, that'd be cool to see the the Airtable base for that. Um, totally. So Meredith, come on the show, share with us what you built. <laughs> All right. And then lastly, from Justin, some, some tricks uh, that he's learned about Airtable formulas and field IDs. If you build an Airtable formula that references another field and you use a field ID instead of the field name, Airtable won't throw any errors when saving the field configuration, provided that the ID relates to an actual field in the same table. The next time you configure the fields formula, you'll see the name instead of the field ID between the curly braces. This by itself isn't terribly practical, but it was in testing the theory that I discovered the following. When building a formula string to use in an API call that uses the filter by formula, you can simply use a field ID in place of a field name, for example, to find all the records. So basically, yeah, you can always substitute a field ID 
um, instead of the name. But I didn't realize that you could do it in the formula, but then it switches it to the name, <clears throat> which is interesting. I guess, yeah, with Airtable itself, it's always maintaining a live link to your other field, so it knows. Mm -hmm. But that, but when you're using something like Make or Zapier, Make, I know, has an option, an advanced setting where you could turn it on to always use field IDs. Mm -hmm. Because some things in Make will could potentially break if you rename the fields in Airtable. And if you turn on the advanced setting to always use field IDs, then behind the scenes, it'll always be using the field ID when it communicates mm -hmm. with, with Airtable. There is a downside to that, which is that when you get error messages in Make, the error messages will show with the field ID as opposed to the field name. So it's a little harder to troubleshoot. Mm -hmm. right. But anyways, yeah. The good thing is, remember, now they have the the viewer, the admin page that shows you all the field IDs. Remember the old way you had to like, there was like a trick to like get the field ID via formula field or something. <laughs> you could, or you would go to the API that's uh, yeah. generated for each base, but that's like, that's annoying. Yeah. yeah. When, you know, it's, it's long. It's for like every single table that you have in there it, it was difficult to search and filter so the manage fields uh feature is pretty useful it is for i think it's there for teams but you don't have dependencies i think that's locked for business right and by the way that field id column is hidden by default so you have to go to the little settings panel and enable the field id to see it right right and you can also search by field ID, which is useful if you've used it like in a script or something and you want to figure out like, what is this field? You could put it in the search bar and it will like then show you the name of the field, which is very useful. Oh, yeah. that's cool. You're saying in that in that tools area or in the main grid? Um, I haven't tried it in the main grid view because you can search by a field name in the main grid view. Right, right. But if you're in the manage fields, you know, tool thing, you can type in the name, the ID of a field and it will still filter appropriately. Oh, that's great. That's great to know. I'm, I'm trying it now. Yeah, I was about to test. You can't, I just tried searching Dang. for a field ID. It's not doing Well, anything. if they add that, that'd be nice. You know, right? you, could do, you could use your browser search to do it, like your yeah. Chrome search or your Safari search and that should hopefully find it. Interesting. On the grid view? No, on the, uh, in oh, the yeah. tools. Right, right, right. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, that wraps up our um, community updates. No major, oh wait, we, I didn't get, uh, there was a new feature that we need to talk about. Uh, apparently I didn't save the link to it, but um, talking about uh, you can now remove the primary field in grids in interfaces. I believe Ben, I thought Camille, you, I thought you were the first to, to highlight that in the built on air, but then Ben actually had a previous post. It's always Ben. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's exciting. Yeah, I did not notice um, much like many of these smaller like features. They're so small, I get why they're not in like their own announcement post, but yeah, uh, in an interface in the full page or like embedded in like one of those custom layout things, you can not display the uh, primary field if you want, just like a list view, you can pick which ones are shown. And that's very useful because, you know, a lot of times you have a primary field that's like a concatenated formula of a lot of other fields and, you know, you don't need to see duplicative data. So, um, you know, I'm glad that feature was there and it's probably been there, I don't know, maybe a week or something. And it was just so, you know, just flew under the radar for me. Yep. Yep. So there was one feature update this week. <laughs> All right. Let's give a shout out to onto air. It's our primary sponsor and onto air is automated backups for your air table solutions. And, um, just going to highlight, if you check out ontoair.com, we have several guides that help you with your backup. So best practice is always have your data stored outside of Airtable. We help backup to Box, Dropbox, or Google Drive. And there is a guide on there, the essential guide to backups for your Airtable base. 
walks you through all the ways you could potentially back up your data. But the easiest, of course, is to check out on to air, set it up in a few minutes and you're good to go. And you can rest assured that your data is stored outside of Airtable. So check us out at ontoair.com. You can use Built on Air for a discount code that gets you, uh, I believe, 10% off for a month or two. And now Scott's going to walk us through third party app fill out forms. Great. All right. I will share my screen here. Let's see. Here we go. Okay. Can, can you see my... Uh... Yeah. Can you zoom in just a little? Uh, yes. What if I made the window smaller? Would that help? Let's see. Is oh, that... Yes. Yeah. Okay, cool. Awesome. So basically, we are going to be talking about fill out and uh, I'll just bring up their website here. So this is possibly, you know, the most advanced form tool that communicates directly with Airtable. Um, it lets you create records in Airtable and update records in Airtable. Today, I'm going to show you how you can use it to create records. I won't be going into the updating today. But um, it's very cool because it has a lot of advanced features that people have really wanted in Airtable's native forms for so many years. And they've built a ton of them into this product. And so I'll start with this Airtable base that I've created here. And uh, this is a base for taking orders for flowers. I actually figured that my name, my last name was Rose and I've never done anything flower related. <laughs> today, today was the day. I probably should have saved it for like Valentine's Day or something, but yeah. it's October. We're doing it now. So anyways, we got a list of our customers here and we've got their emails, their phone numbers, and whether they're active or inactive, any previous orders that they've placed here. And then we have this formula field, which I will show you a little bit later. And then uh, we have a list of products. So you can buy roses, tulips, and boxes of chocolates. Here's the price. And then we have orders. There's no orders in the system yet, but each order can be linked to a particular customer. And then each order will have a whole bunch of line items. And then there'll be an order total. And then here's the order line items. So these two tables are blank right now. And then in fill out, I would like to show you the form that I've created, and then I'll sort of go backwards and show you what I did uh, underneath the hood, behind the scenes. So I'm gonna preview this form right here. And one cool thing that you can do with fill out is you can have multi-page forms or you can have a single page form. And so since we can't do multi-page forms in Airtable, I thought, oh, it'd be very cool to show off the multi-page feature of fill out. So, I've started with a little welcome screen here. Welcome to the flower ordering form. We highly recommend the roses. <laughs> and then you click on start and it takes you to the first page of the form and it says, please choose a customer. And I'm gonna click on the add button here and it gives me a list of my customers. And here's one thing you could see right off the bat is that you can create new linked records. So we're actually in the, we're actually gonna be adding to the orders table, but it lets us create new customers in another table, which is the customer table. So one other thing you'll notice here is when I click on the add button, it's only showing me two customers. And that's because I have fill out set to only show me customers that I've marked as active. So only Allie and Camille are our two active customers right now. Um, and that can be all controlled in, in fill out without you needing to create separate views or any other tricks in Airtable. Fill out handles all that for you. I'll show you that when I show you the setup of this. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to choose one of our existing customers. I'm going to choose Allie. And then underneath here, just so you know that I've chosen the right person here, um, it's showing some lookup fields. Uh, it's showing, even though we're doing this from within the orders table, it's showing her phone number and her email. I've also got it displaying up here as well, but normally I wouldn't want that. Normally I would just want her name to be there and I'll show you how to change that as well. But I wanted to show you that this little blue thing highlights here showing you the value of uh, any field that you would like. And then if I X out of this, 
that disappears as well. So I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna choose Alley. I'm gonna to go to the next screen here. And now I'm gonna choose my products. And one thing that you know from working with Airtable is when you're adding line items or when you're adding linked records, by default, it'll show you all the linked records that are in the other table that you haven't yet linked to that record, to the main record. Um, and you have to create a special view if you only, if you don't want people to get confused, like if you don't want them to add line items that are associated with other people's products, you have to set up a separate view that filters those out. It's a big setup process. And then, in, then in your linked record field, you have to say only show the linked records from this view. Well, you don't have to worry about any of that with fill out. When you click on the add button here to add a new product, we can make it so um, it only shows you Oh, you know, I'm sorry, I'm saying this wrong. On this page, we're actually gonna do the product here, but basically it, you can hide it so it only enables you to create new line items and it never lets you choose from existing line items that might be associated with other orders because that'd be very, very confusing. So what I've done here is I've chosen, I want six long stem roses, shows me the cost, and then I'm gonna say I want four of these and it's showing me that four times three, four times 30 would be $120. So it's doing calculations. So it's displaying fields from your Airtable database, and then it's doing the math as well. So I'm gonna submit this and it'll show up here in a second. This is my first line item here. And then I'm gonna click add. I'm gonna add another product here. And we'll do 12 long stem roses and we'll do five of those. And that's $300. And now we're going to submit. And now these are the items that are on our order. And then here's the grand total that appears. And then when I submit it, it takes me to a final page that you can also customize as well. So that was a basically a four page form. And when we come back into Airtable, we can see that Ali has placed a new order. It's now order number four in our database. And so if we go here to order number four. It's linked to Ali. Here's the line items that she chose. And here's the order total. And here are the line items that are associated with that order. So very cool. Um, Quick question, Scott. Does it, does it create the line items in line, right? As you click that add, it creates it in their table? Yes, it does. But then it, it doesn't link it until you hit the second submit. That is correct. That is correct. So if somebody does leave the fill out form halfway through, you know, if they just close their web browser, you will have orphaned uh, line items here. Right. Uh, but they just won't be linked to anything at that point. Great. So, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I, that's, that's what I would expect. That's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you could actually, yeah, you could actually, you know, set up an automation maybe to catch, you know, those later if you wanted to, or probably deal with them in a variety of different ways. Is um, it possible to, I'm sure you can have like a hidden field in a form. Maybe you could like pass, you've already selected your customer. Maybe you can pass the email of the, the customer to a field. Um, and, you know, that way if they close a browser, maybe you could be like, hey, you, Hey, hey, finish this. <laughs> you have you have a half made form or something. Totally. Yeah, that's a great idea. That's a great idea. And you know, a lot of stores do that. Have you ever noticed that when you leave yeah. the cart and then they'll send you the email? Yeah. Yeah, that's a perfect idea. So yeah, I'll show you behind the scenes because you can have all sorts of hidden fields. You can have default fields that are also hidden. You could pass values from one page to another page of your form and then pass on values from a parent form to a sub form. Those, when you're creating new records and other tables, they consider those sub forms or child forms and you could pass values down there. I'll show you a little bit of the setup of this behind the scenes here. So this is where you set up your pages. So you can see I have four pages set up here at the bottom. I've got the welcome page. I've got the page, page one, which is my customer selection. Page two is product selection and then my ending page. And I named these pages down here, so you can name these whatever you want to make them easy for you to you know, understand what they are. And then over here on the left, it will show you any fields that are in your Airtable base that you haven't yet 
added to your form. So I've already added all my fields to the form. So there's no more Airtable fields showing up here, but that's because I've already dragged them out onto the form. So, oh, I'm sorry, do you have a question? Oh, no. All right. So basically, this is the linked record field. So this, when you first set up your form, it asks you what um, context this form is going to be from. So I chose the context of the order table. So because I wanted people to be adding in new orders. So the customer field will show up as a linked record field. So you could see that I've brought on the customer linked record field here and they call linked records, they call them record pickers. And here's where you can set default values. You could put a caption, like I type, please choose a customer here. And then you get into some really cool advanced stuff here. The first thing that you can get to is, can you create new records? And I turn this on. So if the customer isn't in the list, you can actually create new customers in the link table, in the customer's table, even though you're actually typing in from the order table. And so here, this is similar to Airtable's interfaces. You click on this edit button right here and it'll open up in a new screen for you. And this is where you configure the values of the, uh, you can configure the, the, the layout and the fields and even default values if you want, they're gonna go into the customer's table. And another cool thing that Airtable does not have is you can set up validation for, for your fields. So you could set minimum length, maximum length. Um, you could do regex if you like regex. You could do conditions uh, and you could display custom error messages. And these can be dynamic custom error messages as well with this little blue plus sign. So that's one cool thing right off the bat. You have some really nice validation stuff here. Um, so I'm gonna get out of this sub form. This is the child form basically to create new records in customers. I'm gonna to return to the parent form, which is where we started. And let's go back to customer selection here. And you click on this little gear to open up the all your settings here on the right. And this is where you can pass information on to the subform if you want to. And here is the advanced section. This is where you can choose what fields you want to show when people are choosing a linked record. So let me show you what that looks like. I'm going to click on preview here. And so I've chosen three fields to show right now. So when somebody chooses a new customer here, you can custom, I've chosen it to show customer name email and phone number. So all three are being displayed there and you could choose as many as you want. This is something that people have also wanted in Airtable's forms where you know you it only shows you the primary field. So you have to concatenate it with all the different fields you want. But let's say I don't want them to see the you know the phone number. I just want them to see customer name and email. This is what that would look like. You can already guess what this looks like. So now you can see here that it's just showing customer name and email. So for each one of your linked records, you can pick as many fields as you want to display there. And another cool thing is you can choose what field you want to search by. So in Airtable, you can only search by the primary field. Um, with fill out, you can choose any field that you want the user to be able to search by. Now, what you can also do is you can keep your primary field looking really nice in Airtable like this, and you could set up another field. Like in Airtable, you would have had to make this search formula the very first field, the primary field, if you wanted people to search in their forms. But what you can do with fill out is you can keep this looking really, really nice and beautiful for your customers or for your internal team or whatever. And then you just create this search formula that combines everything, and you could just hide this. Nobody even needs to see this. This can just be used in fill out. So I chose to, uh, to search by that search formula field. So again, if I were to preview this and I go here to start and I choose a new customer, now, even though you're not seeing that, well, you actually are seeing it right here, you can type by any of the values. So I can type the phone number and Allie will still come up here in just a moment. 
or I could type by the email address or whatever. Now, the one downside is even though in Airtable, you know, it's really nice and pretty, your primary field, um, in fill out whatever field you use to search by, um, that's actually going to show up when you choose that. So even though this is not the primary field in Airtable, it, it reveals basically, you know, what you're searching on. So the search field mm -hmm. and the display field are currently tied together. Um, so that's sort of one downside, just so you know about that. Um, okay, I'm going to exit out a preview here. I'll show you a couple other things that are really cool. So uh, let me see. Um, oh, yes, you can also filter your linked record field as well. This doesn't require you creating any other views in Airtable. You can edit your filters right here. And so I told it that I only wanted to show me customers where their status is active. So it's all done right here from, uh, from fill out. And we already talked a little bit about validation before. And then here is where you can start bringing in lookup fields from that other table. Now, in this particular instance, because I have this special search field, I don't really need to show these lookup fields because it's already part of my search field. But let's say I got rid of that search field, uh, which also changes the display. So you're only seeing the customer name. I may want them to make sure they chose the right person here by bringing in some additional lookup fields here. So the way you do that is you can, there's two different elements here that you can bring on your form. There's one that's called a banner. That's what this is. The banner is cool because you can set a background color and it sort of shows up like with this border around it. And then the other one is paragraph. That's just a blank text right there. And um, it's not as pretty as the banner. But what you would do is if you want to bring in extra like things like lookup fields or dynamic values or calculations or whatever, you just hit the at symbol and it gives you this whole list of different things that you can choose from here. And so for me, I want to bring in some lookup fields. This is exactly how I set up this banner here, but I'm going to show you how I set it up. It tells you, okay, which page do you want to bring in the values from? So you can actually have values from other pages still be displayed on this page. But I'm going to choose from this page, and I'm going to say the customer selection page. And then I'm going to choose the, the customer field. I'm going to continue. And then I have all the different fields from Airtable. So I was saying lookup field, but these are not actually set up as lookups in Airtable. It's actually fill out doing the looking up for you. So I was just using the word lookup field because we're accustomed to that terminology. So what I want to do is I want to display this person's email address. And I will just put some text here. I'll say your customer's email address is this. And so I'm going to now preview this. And we're going to go to the first page here. I'm going to choose a customer. And you'll notice that it says your customer's email address is, and that's probably not what I want. Until I don't want to see this until we choose a customer. So I'm going to show you how to hide that too in a moment. So I'm going to choose Allie. And now it's not showing any of that extra information because I disabled that extra search feature. So I'm going to choose Allie. And now here's the new one I just added. Your customer's email address is, it puts Allie's email here. And then I also have the original one right here. Now this one didn't display until I filled an alley. And that is because it also offers conditional uh, hiding, conditional visibility. So, um, you know, and that's, and Airtable actually has conditional visibility as well. So you come over here and here's where you can hide it. So I can say, I only want to show this when um, the customer name has actually, the customer has, is not empty. So now both this paragraph and this banner, they'll both be hidden when there's no customer and um, they'll show when I've chosen a customer. Dan, do you want me to wrap up or do you want me to go? Uh, yeah, I'd probably, yeah, I'd probably wrap up. <laughs> okay, cool. Final thing I do want to say is that um, when you're choosing new products here, you can I set it so that people can only ch choose new, create new line items. Oh, that's actually on the next screen. I won't, I won't talk about that. But I did want to show you that you can also create formulas. So it performs the math in fill out for you. And you do that by clicking on the logic button here. 
you go to calculations and you can set your own formulas to either sum up your line items or do the math like quantity times dollar amount equals amount. And yeah, so that's all I want to show you. Um, so there's, there's a lot more things. There's so many more things that I haven't even shown, but it really gives you a lot of advanced, um, advanced power. Yeah. Yeah. It's an amazing product. And to be transparent, people that know the history of onto Air, we had a form solution. There is many reasons why we decided to pull it back, but one of them was once I dug into fill out, it was what I wish I could have built. And so that was one of the reasons where I was like, I felt like that was a solid solution that did everything. There's a couple of features that I've already talked to them about that onto air had that they should add. Um, one is you can create linked records, but you can't update existing linked records. That is one feature we had mm -hmm. that um, they still have not added. And so hopefully they will, they will take that in. Cause I know a lot of people, um, want that functionality so but it is an amazing piece of software like i i was fully impressed and definitely factored into our decision to to scale back on the form side <laughs> all right let's move on we will uh ali feel free to take the rest of the time we'll we'll hold off on the last one for an other episode so ali's gonna walk us through a scripting time field searching <laughs> Excellent. All right. So I wrote this script the other day while I was on with a client um, because we actually talked about this feature earlier in the show where we've got this manage fields panel, which I believe is visible for a team and above. I'm not sure if it's vis visible on the pro plan, um, but the downside to this, this is really great. You can search by all sorts of things for fields that you're looking for, but it's only going to show you the values from the table that you're looking at. It doesn't search across the entire base for your field names. Um, so like if I try and search for the word location, this is going to show me, and apparently it's fuzzy search too, because this is showing <laughs> calculation or maybe it's because it references some things. That's actually interesting. I haven't noticed that before. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, not sure why those fields are showing up. Maybe they reference one of the location fields somehow, maybe. Mm. But regardless, um, mm -hmm. this is not the best tool for what I'm trying to do because I want to search for a field that has the word location in it across all my tables. Um, so I wrote this little script and I never know on the podcast if I should just write it again from scratch or just show you what I've got, but I have it already written. <laughs> it's very short. It's made a little bit more fancy um, by, I have this output title function that I put on every script where instead of having to write output.clear a million times throughout it and then output the, I like to have a title for each of my scripts. Um, I write this little function so that way I can just call it a couple times throughout the script and it'll put my title, it'll clear everything and put the title back at the top. Um, so that's what that is. You don't need that part. Um, <laughs> everything in basically from here to here is just what I've got going on here. So the first thing that happens is we define all the tables in the base. So just base.tables is going to give you um, all the tables in a base. So if I comment this out and let's just show what that looks like. Now I have 13 tables in this base. So the scripting app is really, or scripting extension, excuse me, um, <laughs> is really great for metadata. It doesn't have access to all the metadata features that like the metadata API does, but it's pretty robust. So I've got access to how many tables I have on each one of these objects here. I can see all of the fields that are on that table. I can see all the views that are on that table, um, the description of each table, which apparently I've demoed this before and just wrote this as a table description. <laughs> <of that first laughs> one. <laughs> um, but you can see here how useful this can really be. If you need to write a little script to dig into your metadata, it's 
really, really robust. So now that I've defined each one of my tables, I ask the user for a search term. So I'll just start by commenting out each one of these lines, I guess, to show. Um, so it's asking me to type in a field name, or I should have made more specific. It doesn't have to be a field name. It could just be a search term that appears in a field name. It could be a phrase. It could be one word. It could be anything. Um, so once I've done that, I define an empty array to hold all of my eventual field matches that I find. And then I start to loop through each one of those 13 tables with this for loop here. So each one of those, every time I go through, I'm looking at the fields that are tied to each table. Not sure why I have this error here. Um, it still runs flawlessly, but I haven't been able to figure out why that's underlined. Um, if you have any ideas, let me know. I think because table that fields could be null. It shouldn't really? possibly be null, but mechanically, yes. I think that's why yeah. the error persists, but you can't have a, a table without any fields. Yeah. Right. Their, their error handling is way over aggressive. It is very aggressive. I've noticed, yeah, I, I hate seeing the little red squiggly, so I try everything in my power to make them go away, but it'll still run with it. Um, but so basically I've got, I'm defining, all right, table.fields. And if you recall, when I had that little object up, we're looking through each of the fields that are a part of that table and I'm filtering through them. And so the first thing I do is I want to look at each field and translate it into a lowercase um, casing. So that way I'm not, I don't care about capitalization when I'm searching because some people have different nomenclature when they or syntax when they're naming fields, some might all do lowercase, some might do all uppercase or proper casing. So I wanna throw all that out the window when I'm doing this search. Um, so I transform both the field names and my search term to lower casing. And I'm just saying, all right, do, do, does this field name include the search term that I've entered in above? If it does, then I'm, keeping it and I'm throwing all the rest of those fields out. And then this line here, I'm just formatting those fields that do match to um, the to a format that I can then display in a table. So everything in here is what's going to ultimately be output to the user. So I could add to this if I wanted to like put in the field description, for example, I could add that as well. And I'll show you what that looks like in a second. Um, and then I'm, I'm pushing all of that to my all matches empty array up here. And then every time it loops through, it runs this little output title script. So it clears what was there before and then outputs the new version of the table. Um, so I'm gonna just show what that looks like here. So I tried searching location earlier. Actually, let's just do a capital L so you can see. So now, I see all the fields across all of my tables that have the word location in it. Um, nice. I've got field type. I've got the table here where it's located so that I can go and find it. Um, and this is useful. Like I've had so many times, especially if you have like a giant database and you're like, oh, I know I had a field name at one point. I I know it had this title in it, but I can't remember what table it's on or anything to do with it. This comes in handy um, in those situations. Um, if I wanted to add like another thing to this table, I could add in like the description. I'm just type in field dot description. I don't think I have many field descriptions because I'm really terrible at documentation. Yeah, so it's literally empty for all of them, but if it was filled in, then that would show up there as well. And now you can you can uh, link directly to a field, right? So you could make these clickable. Mm. Go directly yeah. to them. I suppose you could, yeah. Um, one thing I'm not sure, can you put URLs in a table? Will it display that? It will, I believe, well, in a table, 
I'm unsure. And if it, it does, it will open in a different um, tab. That's good. I would want it to, I think, so you could keep this open. Yeah. But, but yeah, you you absolutely could um, experiment with trying that out. Yeah. Yeah. So I've added this to my little repertoire of scripts that I try and put in like all my bases. Um, that is super useful. Before we sign off, can you click on tools again? Yes. That's new relationships oh yeah this is a beta it's it's so not even useful <laughs> <Cool>. <laughs> i've tried like i've honestly like i forgot i even had it i never yeah. come here um you can click into things and it shows you it's like a basically a expanded schema app yeah. um, extension but <clears throat> again it's it's not it's not that helpful <laughs> mm. yeah 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 mm. But very cool. Thank you, Allie, for sharing that. Of course. That is useful. And yeah, if you can make that available, we can we can uh, share that out for people that want to run that script. Absolutely. <laughs> and then we'll end just join our community, builtonair.com slash join gets you in with thousands of other Airtable fans and users and uh, come on the show, showcase what you've got going on in Airtable. We'd love to have you on. So We'll do the last segment on a future episode, and we will see you all next week. Bye. Bye. Thank you for joining today's episode. We hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to check out our sponsor, Onto Air Backups, automated backups for Airtable. We'll see you next time on the Built on Air podcast.